my question is the uh, pods, I guess you guys are calling them pod story pods this, this time? For lack of a better word, yeah. yes. So you have, usually you do about two, but this season you're doing three. And so what sets the next pod apart from the last two that you've done as far as your like, excitement level? Not so excited. Jump yeah, we're not I'm in excited. this one. I'm in this one, so I figure I just want to, yeah, if I yeah. can answer this, that's probably the main at a difference. Ten. Yeah, <laughs> that's the main difference. It's the best pod because of Brett Dawson. Right. Exactly. There like actually eight, is no other difference. Ten. We're just retelling some of those same stories, but just putting him, no. Putting him exactly. back in. I do a fantastic Colson. Yes. <laughs> um, we, uh, we're very excited about this last pod. I think that it's something that we wanted to do for a while, and now that we're in our fourth season, it feels like the right time, which is kind of flipping things on its head, um, which involves bringing this we, little puppy right. back. Right, we figured if we were going to dive back into Hydra, we yeah, might we, as well we can't bring not back do that. our original villain. And we, yeah. yeah, we wanted to do it in a way that didn't undercut what we, the heartbreaking story we had told, so this is sort of an, an alternate reality, which is a way to get his ugly mug back on screen. Yeah, and it's, it just goes to show that we just can't let go. Of Agent Grant Ward. Yeah. I can't either. <laughs> Finally, that phone rang. Yeah. <laughs> I think I made that phone call, right? Yes, I think you did. I did. So is this a real you. redemption story? Because I was always wondering, could you redeem Ward? So is this... We'll it? see. Well, it's we'll certainly see. an opportunity to, whether or not that's right. that bears true. We'll see. What they said. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Uh, no? Oh, if you're just looking for any excuse to kill him off and bring him back? <laughs> yeah. It's not that we like bringing him back, it's that we love killing him. Exactly, exactly. They're going we just for a record, keep basically. Killing yeah. Him. yeah. <laughs> no, you know, the. the uh, we, we, he, there's a shorthand for things being. Uh, for an opposite world, really. Two, two things that are real shorthand. One is the shield symbol being replaced by a Hydra symbol, and the other is Grant Ward being anywhere in the vicinity of, the, of our characters. So, you know, we, when we started talking about going into the framework and sort of the stories we would tell there, it seemed like an, an obvious choice to, to bring his character back and, and try to tell some new stories with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you guys see the episode? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was so funny. There were so many people in the front row. We could just hear their gasps and like, oh, yes. and, oh and, yeah. excitement when he went, no! excitement when he saved our people, and then heaves of sadness and gagging noises when Fitz kissed. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say that was the other big one. Did you close your eyes? I still sort of do too. Yeah. I couldn't watch it. Yeah, it's hard. I still do that too. I don't know. All right. Okay. I can see the appeal. Yes. It's always a possibility. Um, yeah. You know that we can't ever speak to that really because there are a lot of factors. Right. Besides the, the, our desire to do it, there's also financial and and, and, and logistics. logistics. Uh, but no, that's always a. a, a a possibility, and I think that as you see that, that they're stepping into, you know, with Doctor Strange, they stepped into sort of a more mag magical world in the in the MCU, and we've reflected that with Ghost Rider. And so, even when there aren't literal crossovers of characters, I think that all the themes that everybody's exploring are starting to sort of interweave, and uh, and it's just expanding and expanding. So, hmm. the answer would be yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I got a passcode, bro. I, <laughs> yeah, every month I pay for it, and it's, it's yeah. pretty simple, actually. Off, yeah, it's like, I think it's off limits unless you have over. ten dollars. Yeah. yeah. Um, as far as crossing over. Yeah. That's I mean, sort of above our pay grade. Yeah, it's above our pay grade. I think that's a question for Jeff Lowe, but uh, we always welcome. The chance. We'll never say no to anything. Yeah, we'll never say no to anything. So like there's a lot of instances on those shows where they can mention in a human as an explanation for something that they never do, so there seems to be like a lot of right. Chinese walls between the various... Well, I think that part of it is when you're in a story, when you're in a specific story, we do this too, you know, you don't want to... They don't necessarily want to be saying in human to have their audience going, wait, why are we... Is that something we should be talking about? Why aren't we talking about that? Just as we we don't ever, when the end of the world is coming, say, is, shouldn't Thor be here? Because then everybody will be like, yeah, yeah why, why the hell he isn't here? he here? Um, so, you know, sometimes even when you want to interconnect, you want to isolate your story so that the stakes feel real and, and to keep your audience on point. Is that a challenge to keep, find the balance of how epic you can make the stories before you start questioning why aren't the Avengers 
handle it. So why doesn't Captain America come back out of hiding for this? Or why is it Tony Stark? I think that was a challenge that we faced when we first started the show, being that we were Marvel's first live action television series. Everyone, when they hear the Marvel brand, they, they hear the Marvel name, they expect... Iron Man. The, yeah, they expect Iron Man, they expect the giant feature level production. But I do think over the course of four years, you know, we've developed our own our own style and finesse, if I may. And our characters, which unlike the the film properties, our characters didn't exist before the show. And same with the Netflix shows. You know, we are introducing characters who were new to the, the Mar Marvel fans, and so that took a little while to to grow out. But I think the response to your question about. I, I don't think it bothers audiences when you're in, let's say, Iron Man 3 or you're in, in, a, in one of those movies and things, all of their action is on an epic global scale and you don't really ask those questions as long as you're interested in the story. If you start to be lose interest, you'll be like, it'd be pretty cool if Captain America came in right now. <laughs> Grand Ward, liven things up a bit. <laughs> right. Grand Ward was sort of born out of what was featured in Civil War and or was it Winter Soldier? Which was, was Winter, our Winter, Winter Soldier? Soldier yeah. um, you know, because if we can get more on a personal level with experiencing what is it like to have someone that you've been partners with mm -hmm. revealed as a more. One question: What do you hope to bring to this version of War versus every other? We've seen a lot of different. <laughs> right. What do you want to bring to this one? But it's really simple. I just want to stay alive. <laughs> That's my only goal. Um, yeah. And he isn't even doing using his time on screen to do that. He's just sending us gifts. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of phone I mean, calls. Something's got to work, right? Yeah. Cookies. I'm just every angle I possibly can. Um, I think that you know we have uh, uh, incredibly smart writers, and uh, and they're bringing me back. I think. Um, they're not unaware of uh, the fan base, and um, I think that we went in an incredibly interesting way uh, with Grant Ward's character over these crazy seasons. But the one thing that I think doing that did was it kind of excluded the possibility of possibly having a... Shit, I'm going to get myself in fucking trouble. <laughs> it's starting... You're, you're about to paint yourself into a corner. Yeah. Where, and I and what, what I really mean is, I actually can't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I realized that. I was like, where, where I mean, am I going? The story. He can't say anything. Where am I going? I mean, I'll answer a little bit for yes, him. Yes, please that, do. That, uh, the thing that the thing I think that Brett has always brought to Ward is a relatability. Even when he was scary, and we've always talked about Jeff Loeb refers to Grant Ward as our greatest act out because. When in doubt, you have Grant Ward walk in, and everybody goes, yeah, and then you cut to commercial. Um, Which but, we very much did in episode yes, 16. Yes, we did it. We were like, oh, he's back. That'll be act break number yeah. four. Um, but, uh, you know, he's always brought a humanity to it so that, the, you know, when, we, when he was on the wrong, when he was an antagonist and on the wrong side of things, you know, there's still people rooting for him because he brings humanity to the role and, and he makes you care for him even when he's doing things that, that would turn most sane people away and so you know we're leaning into some of that uh, likability in this pod and and, and uh, you know as you see and I don't know when any of this will come out but um, we're still making him one of those people that you don't you have questions about you like him or you you hate to love him or you love to hate him but you're still wondering and, and uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the save, know. first know. of all. But also, uh, um, also, now that I've had a chance to actually think about it, um, I think that uh, the cool thing is, um, what am I going to bring to this, is what you said, how is this going to be different? I think this is cool because, uh, as you saw in the episode, it's kind of a return to like classic Grant Ward. Season one, season two, before he had Hydra around him and was like on a uh, hell bent on taking Coulson down, um, there was a like gray area that he straddled uh, where he was sometimes good, sometimes bad, whatever he needed to be in order to get the job done. And uh, and this is really cool because what you have is like somebody who's clearly still capable and clearly can scare you, like in the scene where he's got the gun and like. Oh shoot, there he is. I trusted him for a second at the top of the show. Here he goes again. So he still has a lot of those colors uh, in there, and I think that it's just uh, a lot of fun to sort of. Uh, yeah, that was good. To that be was back. Good. That was a good. Classic <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Colors. Are you setting up the Inhumans TV show? Sorry? Are you involved at all? Is there going to be any connection with the Inhumans TV show? Um, One would think. 
o- only in, in that right now they're they're only in that we have humans on our show. I mean, their storyline is very separate, um, uh, intentionally, and so it's going to be its own adventure. And and if it meets, it'll be down the road. Yeah, down the road. Thank you. Okay, thank you.